day to you. You are welcome to RCCG New Covenant Parishes Open Heavens Daily Devotional. The Open Heavens Daily Devotional is written by our Father and the Lord, the General of Asia of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E. E. Adeboe. And I pray that as you join me today, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, 2nd February, um, the topic we'll be looking at is the everlasting God. The everlasting God. We'll be taking a Bible uh, memory verse from Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28, which says, As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. We'll be taking a Bible text from Isaiah chapter 40 from verses 27 to 29, which says, why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest Israel? My way is it from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. As thou art not known, as thou art not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. To be everlasting is to be alive forever. This means that one does not grow old. Our God is ageless. He created time, therefore it has no effect on him. Psalm 90 verse 4 says, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. So we are talking about the everlasting God. I will be made to understand that when you say some, something or someone is everlasting, that thing is ageless. It is not restricted by time. It is forever. God created time, so he is not restricted by time. Time does not have an effect on him. A thousand years is like yesterday before him, or like a watch in the night, like a day to God. So if he spends a thousand years, it's as if he has just spent a day. Time has no meaning to God. It does not affect God. God cannot be contained or restrained by time. Even when it seems as if God may be late in showing up, you can count on Him to do what He says He will at the right time. The everlastingness of God means we should never be afraid of the future. God is now tomorrow, and when we are long gone, He will still be there. We can trust Him to carry us through lifetime and even keep our children in his care. You don't have to worry about your children or grandchildren. The everlasting God will keep them. So when you talk about the everlastingness of God, we, like we said, he's not restrained by time. And so you can always rely on him that if he says he's going to do something for you, even if it seems as if time is going on that thing, because we are restricted by time, it seems, oh, this thing is getting too late. God is not on time. You must remember that God is not bound by time. He will do it at the right time. God is not restricted by time. Even if he seems like that thing has passed, he can bring it back. Remember the case of Joshua. I mean, Joshua needed more time to be able to do what he wanted to do. And he commanded the sun and the moon to stand still. Time stood still for Joshua to be able to do what he wanted to do. Isaiah and um, King Ezekiel. Isaiah told him to ask for a sign. And you know, he asked that the time be turned back 10 degrees. And it did, which was about 10 minutes. Time turned back 10 minutes. So God is in control of time. We may not be in control of time. So whatever God has said he would do, he is never too late. He will do it at the right time. And then we should also not be afraid of the future. Because God is not restricted by time. He was in the past. He is in the present. He will continue to be God in the future. So he will take care of your future. He will take care of your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and great-great-great-grandchildren. God is already ahead of them because he's not restricted by time. He's everlasting. You know that nobody can kill him. That is God. Nobody can dethrone him. And nobody can reduce his power. Once you put something in his hands, you can go to sleep knowing that he's secure. So because he's not restricted by time, he's ageless, he can't die, he can't be dethroned, he's forever in charge, he's forever powerful, his power cannot reduce. His power is the same. He's the all-powerful. So you can be rest assured that whatever you put in God's hands is safe and secure forever. 
God's everlastingness gives us hope of becoming everlasting as well when we are finally conformed to the image of His dear Son, Jesus Christ. We also will live forever because we have His Spirit. We Christians cannot die, cannot die. When we close our eyes here on earth, we will open them in everlasting life. There is no death or any of its causes like pain and sickness in heaven. Philippians chapter 3 verse 21 says, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So because God lives forever, he is everlasting, we also have the hope of everlastingness, the hope of eternal life. Hope that when we leave this earth, we are going to open our eyes into eternal life, into everlastingness, where there won't be death, we will not die again, where um, the cousins of death or brothers and sisters of death, like pain and sickness, will not exist anymore. So because God is, you know, it is someone that has something that can offer you that same thing. If I have money, I can offer you money. God is everlasting. So because it's everlasting, we have that hope that when we leave this world, we will enter into everlasting life. We will live forever without pain, without sickness, and without death. Do you want to have everlasting life? Then you have to live holy. Hebrews 12 verse 14 says, Without holiness, you cannot see God. Commit to a life of holiness from today. So if you want to partake of the everlasting life, give your life to Jesus. If you have not given your life to Jesus, I urge you today to give your life to Jesus. Because that is the first step for you to actually enjoy eternal life. Give your life to Jesus. Ask Jesus to come into your heart, to forgive you of all your sins, accept you into his kingdom, to give you everlasting life, and then live a life of holiness. Because without holiness, it is impossible to see God. Without holiness, it is impossible to make heaven. So if you've given your life to Jesus, if you've given your life to Jesus, make sure you are holy, so that when the rapture comes or death comes, you open your eyes into eternal life. You open your eyes into everlasting life. And I pray that God will help us, as many of us that have not yet given our lives to Jesus, to make that decision today, and as many of us that have given our lives to Jesus, to continue to live a life of holiness, so that we will be able to be partakers of eternal life in Jesus' name. Our actual point says, praise God because He is everlasting. Let's say a word of prayer. Our Lord, our God, we want to say thank you. Thank you because you are everlasting forever and ever you continue to live. Lord God Almighty, we are asking that we also want to be partakers of your everlasting life. So help us to live only in all we do, in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. God bless you.